your first step in trying to design a shirt is to go to Google Drive. Typically, I do not have you guys design in Google Drive, but when we're actually in the building, you are going to be using Publisher. And I'll talk to you about Publisher at a later time. Um, but for this project, I am going to show you how to go to Drive since we are remote. So you're going to start in the Drive folder and go and click New and just do a Google Doc. Once you have your Google Doc open is where you can start designing your shirt. It's really important that you decide which direction you would like the shirt to go. So maybe not so much the shirt, but your design. So if you're going to have something short, you can leave it vertical like this. Otherwise, you can go down to File, Page, Setup, and you can change it to Landscape. Landscape will flip the paper, so I'll show you what this is going to do. So now your paper goes horizontal. You can also, in page setup, change your margins. Um, I like doing this because it's actually going to give you more space on the paper for when you um, are designing. So you have 0.5 of an inch, so a half inch all the way around, instead of one inch all the way around. So if you want to make something big and bold in the center of your shirt, this is going to give you more real estate on the paper. Now, no matter what color you are going to pull the ink on your shirt, it is really important that you design on your paper in black ink. Not dark gray, not middle gray, not dark blue, black. It must be black. Why does it matter? What if you say, well, Mrs. Lem, I'm going to pull the ink on my shirt to be hot pink. So I'm going to design it in hot pink on the computer. No. You want it in black because when we print it on the paper and it's going to be printed in black ink, black is the darkest color we have, is the most solid color that light can't penetrate through. So when we are exposing our screens, which you'll see in a little bit, it's important that you make it black so that the light can't penetrate through your design. And you'll understand this a little bit more when you see me demo it. Okay? So if you're going to just do something where it's a quote, You can write it and highlight it and then come over here and, you know, pick whatever font you want and you can make it, um, you know, bold. You can play around with the size. Now, you gotta remember, this piece of paper is 11 inches wide, which we've lost a half inch on each side. So that means we're only getting a max of 10, which is pretty good still. I would say on an adult shirt, I do about nine and a half to 10 inches. So 10 inches is fine if that's what you want to max it out with. When you're doing smaller shirts, like for toddlers or little kids, you obviously are going to need to measure that shirt to know how big it can be maxed out on your paper. Okay. If you want to do something like this, that's totally fine. If you want to, um, insert in an image. I actually do have that for you. Um, you can go ahead and um, use the folder I'm going to share with you and insert in from Drive. Um, I'm going to give you access to this at a later time. So here's a bunch of things. Um, it happens to be recent because I've used them recently, but um, we're going to come in here and choose which one we want to use. So some of these are already blacked out for you, which is fantastic. If it's not going to um, be already black for you, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So if you see the one that you want that's already blacked out, you can go ahead and pick it. Let's say you just want to do this F. So I'm going to click on the F. Pay attention. It's not black. It's dark blue. It's a navy color. So you have to make this black before you print it on the vellum, okay? The vellum is the paper type that we're going to print this out on, and you'll see this in a couple minutes here. So um, we have multiple ways to do this. We can go to Photo P, which you guys have already learned how to use, and we're going to open up that F in Photo P, and we're going to apply a black layer on top of everything that is blue. I'm sorry this is lagging. It's going to take a second. Okay, so once we have our F opened, we're going to remove this blue and replace it with black. There's multiple options we can do. We can come over to, let's see here. Some of these things are a little bit different, so I just wanna make sure I give you the right one. The paint bucket tool here, 
and we're going to uh, double click on the color that we're applying. So right now, we're gonna click on this, we want it to be black. Now, over here is also black, your hex coloring is zeros. We want the black. Um, I just like to do bottom right's black, I know top left is white. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna hit okay. We have our paint bucket selected, we're gonna click on the things that we want to be black. Now, all these lines are connected, so I only had to click twice, here and here. Um, if you want to remove the background, you can, but it's not necessary for this project. We're going to save this, so we're going to export as, it doesn't matter if you choose a PNG or if you do a JPG or a JPEG, um, either of those are fine, and it's going to drop into your drive. So I'm going to, for a second here, do things that you don't have to do, and I'm going to put this in my Google Drive. All right, so we're gonna go back here. Now that I have edited it in to be black, we're going to insert in from our drive folder and um, let's see if it shows up in that folder. It might or might not, I'm not sure. If not, I'm gonna go to my drive, which you guys are gonna be able to do. And I had saved and shared with you the branding images. And if you scroll through them, you're going to find that black F. So I want you to see the difference between these two. So we need to get rid of this one. This is not what we're going to do. Um, we're going to place this F in here to the size we want it to be for our shirt. And it doesn't matter where it's sitting right now on the screen because we're going to align it to the center. If you are designing something where it has to have words underneath it, then this is where you're going to want to play around with this and uh, make it movable. So if you want to enter in some text, you're going to have to type it on the document itself. So let's just do a Fenton High School. <laughs> And I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to center that. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to pick a different font. We're just going to go with something a little bit more basic, bold. Okay, and then I'm going to move this and center it on that. Now, it does seem like it's moving that with it. If I highlight this, um, try and find the center of my document. Uh, you want to focus on the F being in the center of the Fenton High School because that is going to, this is already in the center, this is not. Um, this is why I prefer Publisher over Docs because Publisher is a editing document for images. Um, good for flyer design, not as much for text versus Docs and Word are for text. Google doesn't have a Publisher equivalent you can do google um, drawings which is fun if you want to draw something by hand with a stylus or with your finger or to edit a picture but not for this purpose okay so what you're going to do is once you're done here you're going to go and print it if we were in the school now you guys are in the school so what you're going to do is give this a name up here and uh, maybe put your name on it so I know it's yours. Once you give it a name, you're going to place it in the Google Classroom section so I can go and use this and print it while I'm at school to produce the shirts. You guys are going to vote on the shirts that you want so not all shirts will be designed so don't forget that. The next portion is going to be me in the classroom actually producing this shirt. The paper came out of the printer. You're gonna grab it over here and now you can examine your design. So again, this is the vellum. It's a little bit thinner of paper than regular paper. Some students will notice some imperfections in the printing. When you have a lot of ink, like the solid F, or if you do like a solid square or circle, you're gonna get some of these little uh, imperfections. That's okay. Do also notice it's getting a little blurry there, so we don't wanna make this image too much bigger. It's hard to tell, but this is going to be the machine that you're going to use to expose your image. The first step you're going to do is when you first walk in the classroom, there is going to be a room that has a bunch of drapes just like this. You're going to go in there and there's going to be a cart and you're going to grab out a screen from the cart. The 
the screen is going to look like this. First, what you're going to do is lay your image, image up. We are making a t-shirt, so image up right in the center top of this work area. You'll notice that there are two blue corners that you're going to want to follow suit with. And lastly, there is a rope over here which you're going to want to lay over the top. I know that's not the best angle, but there's the rope here. Our image is in the middle. I'm going to lift this up just a little bit and I'm going to move it up so it's in the middle while still following suit with the blue corners. We're going to close this and we're going to lock the corners. Once you started to lock this, you want to make sure that the hook on this is locked onto the rolling part of this area and not onto this bolt that's here. The next part here is setting up everything. So we're going to turn it on. It probably will be on when you get into the classroom. You should not have to change any of the settings that are on here. Um, if for some reason it looks wonky and it's not correct, you'd want this orange bar on the left hand side for your vacuum to be set to this first little arrow. And this one's gonna be right under that as well for your exposure time. The exposure time, if you look, it just says one, two, three, four, five. That's not a set of time. It's really just a, a number that represents an amount of time. Um, and that's really about it. So you're gonna then hit the start button. And when we do, the screen itself is gonna lose suction um, in the machine. Once you hit the start button, all the air is gonna start to suck out of here. That's really what you're looking for is all the air to be gone and you're gonna see a nice tight uh, shape around the screen that's there. So we're gonna hit start and it's gonna get loud. machine turned off so now we're going to open it up from the bars on the side we're gonna lift it up and we're gonna take our screen out of here and we're gonna go wash it out now it's not gonna look like anything happened which is totally normal because we need to actually wash it out you can take your design and there's actually a rack right there you can place your image in there and then you can come back to it later to get it this part is gonna be difficult to see but I'm gonna put my screen in here and I'm going to wash it out. So here's the hose, just like you would use a garden hose. You are going to push this forward. You can change the settings to be harder. until that image is completely washed out. Make sure you turn off the hose, pick up your screen, and let the water drip out the bottom back into the sink. It's really important that you take the time now to look at your design and make sure that where all the image is supposed to have ink that there's no blue left from the emulsion. So this is the blue stuff is emulsion. I see a little area right here in the corner. I'm going to put it back in and try and wash it out. It was that easy. It came out in just a couple of seconds. Again, I'm going to let the water drip out. And over here, there's a fan on the floor. You're going to put your screen in front of it and turn on the fan. All right, the next step you're going to do is you're going to put your screen on the platform. You might need to move this over. And you're going to go over and grab some tape. There are thicker rolls of tape. Currently, right now, this is all I have left because I haven't ordered anything, so you're going to have to use this. I'm so sorry. 
when you get back to school, there will be thicker tape for you. What we're attempting to do is to cover all the clear areas because we don't want any of the clear exposed except where our image is, so where the F and the Fenton High School is. Part you're going to want to do is depending on the quality of the screen, you're going to want to look at it and see if there's any holes, like pinholes, which we'll talk about that later, or anywhere where there is white that there shouldn't be. So we had one here. I think it's important to tape it up from the back versus the front because when you have small little pieces like this on the front and you try to pull your squeegee it's going to just pick up the piece of tape and you're going to just get ink where you literally tried to block ink from coming in some screens might not have any at all that would be ideal this actually is a newer screen i moved over because it's locked in now okay so our next step is we're going to pull this down and we're going to put our screen in here and I'm just going to tighten it temporarily just enough to hold on to the screen and we're going to lift up. Now you'll notice that this is pretty dirty. I'm going to clean that with screen wash. On the same black cabinet that you got your rolls of tape, you're going to go get a squeeze bottle. You're going to make sure you put safety glasses on because this is basically like acetone. Your next step is to go get a t-shirt. This is the spot dryer. There is a plug up in the ceiling here. You're gonna pull down, it's black, so you can plug in your spot dryer. Make sure you turn it on, there is a switch. And then this is gonna take a few minutes for you to, uh, for it to warm up, but it's really important, it's an ample part of our process. Now we're gonna need some tax spray. You're going to spray your platform. You don't need too much, just enough to make a coating. And you're gonna put your shirt on. You're gonna put your hands through the neck of the shirt and you're gonna put it over the platform. And now is where you want to make sure that it's nice and straight. You want the gaps between where the board stops and where the seams of the sleeves start to be equal. If you want to grab a ruler or a T-square, now would be a good time to do so. Once you've had it even, you're going to take your hands and flatten out all of the wrinkles. Okay. Now you're going to go back and get your piece of vellum and you're going to place your design on your shirt where you want it to go on your shirt. Typically you want to shoot for center, if you're going to do a pocket, you're going to go off to the left or to the right. And pretty average, a design is about four finger widths from the neckline. Pull out some shirts from home, check that, I bet you I'm right. Nice and center and straight. I have been doing this for a long time, so this is going to be pretty quick for me. But for you, when you're actually doing it, you're going to want to take your time, probably get out a ruler and measure it that it's straight. Next. There's a knob down here. You're going to loosen the knob. So now you can pull your platform or your platen. Your platen, that's what this is called, forwards and backwards. Now you might worry about how can I move it left and right? When you bring this down and you loosen this, is now when you can move this left and right. So we're gonna pull our platen forward and line up our shirt and our screen so that they are exactly lined up. I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can see better. So that black and the opening of the clear of the screen is exactly lined up. You're then you're going to lock in your knobs here. And then you're gonna tighten the knob that you loosened when you started. 
It's very important that you lock both of these right now before you do anything else because if you forget to lock them, the shirt's going to move. Now that the knob is tightened, you can see I cannot move the platform. It's tight. This can go up and down and it's gonna land in the same spot every single time. That's how you would make mass quantity shirts. All right, so now we're gonna go back to this wooden cabinet here and we're gonna pick out the color that we wanna put on our shirt. We're also gonna go into this gray drawers over here. We're gonna get a squeegee and our squeegee needs to be wider than our design that's gonna go on our shirt. And probably prior to all that, you wanna grab some gloves which are in those blue buckets right here. They're all labeled large, medium large, and extra large. So you can get whatever size works for you. thing I forgot to mention you're also gonna need a spatula which is to my left where uh, the black cabinet is on the walls so I'm gonna put my bucket down I'm gonna make sure my squeegee is wider than my image which it is I'm gonna place this here open up the bucket so once we've opened up our bucket we're gonna grab the spatula you might want to give it a little bit of a stir especially since it hasn't been used in a while sometimes oil gets on top you don't need a lot. If you're only doing one or two shirts, you're only gonna need about this much ink. And you're going to spread the ink from the left across, and then you wanna go a little bit past your shirt. And then you can kinda use your spatula here to get rid of the excess ink. For now, you can put the lid on and put this off to the side. A lot of the things kids forget to do is to actually pick off this piece of vellum before they get started, you're gonna drop your screen down. Now, this is why we wear gloves because there's ink all over that bucket, all on the outside. Ink is always wet until it's gone through the dryer. It needs 500 degrees for it to get cured. Cured meaning that it's gonna harden so then you can wear the shirt and then you can wash it and rewear it. So I would really suggest you wear gloves or you're gonna have four different colors on your hand. I literally grabbed a gray bucket and I have green, I have red, and I have blue on my hands. Those are not anything I touched while in the cabinet. You're gonna take your squeegee and you're going to flood your squeegee. So you're gonna move it left and right. And then with even pressure and pulling at an angle, you're gonna to pull towards yourself three times. One and you also wanna stop before you get to your screen, you're gonna lift up. You don't need to go all the way to the metal frame and come up. You're actually gonna get a bunch of ink on the frame so it's easier for you to stop right past your image. That's number one. Number two, and we're gonna come back and do our last one. Number three, we're gonna pull up and we're going to let our squeegee sit on the back of the screen so it's out of our way and we're going to lift up. Now, this is when we're gonna need the spot dryer. When you have a dark colored shirt, like black, and you're using a light color like yellow, light pink, dark, or light purple, anything that's light, this gray, white, you're going to need to spot dry. So what's happening here is the dryer is drying or curing that ink that's on the shirt so that we could drop the screen back down and actually put a second coat of ink. So we should leave it on there for about 10 seconds. I call this the pinky test. So find a clean part of your hands or your gloves and touch where there was supposed to be ink. And if it's dry, then that means it has been cured and dried. I'm going to now drop my screen back down. And if we did a good job when we set up earlier, if our screen is tightened in and we've locked in the uh, knob on the right hand side, it should line exactly back up. If we didn't do any of those things, then there's a high probability that it's going to move. And then if I do this next step here, it's going to make a double image. I'm going to come back to my image with my ink and I'm going to pull two more times. If you want to go away from yourself to get more ink there, you are more than welcome to do so. 
it's not going to change it. There's my second pull. I'm going to lift up. And you'll see you have a little bit more ink. There is some imperfection and inconsistencies right here. So I'm actually going to drop it back down while it's still wet. And I'm going to pull in that area only. I'm stopping right here because there's a good amount of ink here. It looks so much better. At this point, you can then take off your gloves. I like to try and keep them. So if you can take them off so that you can put them back on. You need to remember that this shirt is wet. All the ink on this shirt is wet. Please, please remember that. You're gonna put your hands underneath the shirt and you're gonna pull it forward and you're gonna move and pull it off and put it through the big dryer. You want your image up, lay it on the dryer, nice and flat, make sure there isn't any bumps. And when you have like a hoodie, where it's thicker and then the hood is also thick, you also want to make sure it's as flat as possible so when it's going through the dryer and the conveyor belt, it doesn't touch the heat elements at the top and then inevitably burn it. Happened before. So you're going to let your t-shirt go through the dryer. Typically there's a bucket on the other side. This room's getting cleaned right now. So your shirt can just fall into the bucket and you can continue to do the rest of the work that you need to do. It should take about a minute and a half for the shirt to come out completely dry. You want to make sure that the temperature that is stated up here on the dryer is over 500 degrees. So right now it says 530, which is perfect. So once your shirt comes out, you can take it out. And now you can look at your design that you did. We'll do a little close up so you can see everything. Even the small little font came out really, really nice. And there's our finished product. The last part of this process is we're gonna clean our screen. So you need to get all the ink off your screen, back into the bucket if you have extra ink. And then there'll be multiple steps after that. Don't press too hard when picking up the ink off the screen, because you do not want to puncture a hole in the screen for future use. If you mixed any colors together, you will not be putting it back in the bucket and you will just wipe it off on a rag. Put your ink back in the cabinet. you are gonna need a rag and some screen wash and you're gonna put screen wash on your screen on your squeegee and also on your spatula use the rag to remove all of the ink that includes any that is on the handle and then put it away once you have cleaned it You want to take your rag, maybe get a clean side of it, and wipe off all the ink off your screen. Any ink that's left on the tape is fine because we're going to peel the tape off and throw it in the garbage. If you need some more wash, go ahead and add some more, but you shouldn't need a ton. Once you've got that, you can throw your rag in the white garbage can, which is over by the t-shirt dryer and put your screen wash away. Now we can take all the tape off and throw it away like I just mentioned. All right, so we've cleaned off the majority of our screen. We're now gonna head into the dark room and finish it off. This is a multi-step process, so what I would suggest is you start with step one of your bottles. You're going to see them. Um, one says step one, one step says step two. We're going to start with step one. That is going to be ink degradant. We're going to squeeze. And then 
you're going to be able to find, there's a bunch of brushes that look like this in this room, and you're going to rub it into the area where the ink is. Use the power washer to get out any excess. on the ground that you're going to have to step on to get the power washer to work is not just like a regular power washer. Um, what that pedal does is it prevents the machine from always being on. Our next step is going to be step two, which is emulsion remover. This one's a little bit more intensive. So you're going to need to spray the emulsion remover on all of your screen. That includes both sides. You have a front and a back. The blue stuff on your screen, as a reminder, is your emulsion. shot especially with the power washer you can grab some more chemicals spray it on the hard areas you do really need to make sure you get all of the blue off it does matter some pink uh, screen degreaser. Uh, we currently do not have any here at school. I will show you this at a later step when we get back to school. It's basically like a conditioner, so it's kind of looks like shampoo conditioner. It's pink in color. You're going to scrub it on there like you did with all your other chemicals with the pink brush, and then you're going to power wash it and then use the regular hose to get out all the soap. So you want to use a regular hose on regular shower mode. any of the residue. Pick up your screen, let all the water drip out like you did before, and then now you have a clean screen that I can recoat for you. <laughs> 